Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moves west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The last step before preparing this cabinet for the dark toner that needs to go on. I always like to, in order to save on toner, because the stuff is expensive, I always like to put a dark stain on the areas that's going to get the toner. And that way I don't have to lay on so many coats of the dark oak toner. So what I do is, if I have a bunch of stain left, uh, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there, I'll kind of mix it together and, and come up with something dark and just sort of keep it around for just such an occasion. And that's what I've got right now. So I'm just going to take this rag and uh, dip it in the old dark stain. Just rub it all over. I'm going to try to stay away from this edge, of course, all the way around. Real up, up, up against the, uh, the front panel. I don't want to get it. Wouldn't, it would come off anyway since I've already got that, that uh, shiny toner on there anyway. It would never soak in. But I'm going to get it up about as close as I can get. And then we'll let the rest ride until after I tape it off. Now all I'm doing is I'm just going to go ahead and rub it in, make it look fairly smooth since it's going to have toner over the top. It doesn't have to be all that big of a deal. You know, it'll all be covered up. But I'm just kind of going with the grain, just rubbing it in, rubbing it down until it's all pretty much worked in. I'm not even going to wipe it off when I'm done. I'm just going to let it dry unless I have to. Sometimes these old stains, you have no choice but to wipe them off. They won't dry unless you do. And of course it includes the back edging all the way around. I get a nice color going on that because this is also going to be made dark. You get it looking real good. Take your time now. There's no big rush. No big don't get in a hurry now. Just because we're getting close to finishing up the, the project, you know, a lot of people get in a hurry. This is the time, I repeat it. Every time I do a restoration, when you start getting close to the end of a project, that's the time to slow down, not to speed up. That's all there is for today. I'll let this stain dry for 24 hours and then determine whether or not we need to do a wipe down or not if it doesn't fully dry. Uh, sometimes this old Minwax stain gets old and it just won't dry. You got no choice but to rub it down real good with a dry cloth I've had there's been times I've had to actually remove the stain with uh, mineral spirit or turpentine and uh, start all over again so I'm hoping we won't have to do that with this but once she dries if she dries then we're gonna go ahead and mask off the front and start laying on the toner to darken up the rest of the cabinet and we will be just about zeroing in uh, I do have a problem I'm going to have to solve with the support for the speaker, uh, speaker cloth. I think I've got an idea how to do that. We're getting ready to tape off this front. And I use the same type of uh, tape procedure, cutting the tape, that I did when we uh, put in the black lines. Now this is very low stick tape. I mean, this barely hangs on, you know, which is real good because I don't want it to mess around with the finish any. So I'll put the thin tape all the way around the front. And once I get it on, then I'll take some newspaper with some tape and tape it to this tape. She's taped off and ready to go. Now comes the extra dark walnut toner. And again, it'll be misted on, just like we did on the front with the... Uh, perfect brown. It'll just be misted all over the rest of the cabinet. The trick here is to apply multiple thin layers of the uh, toner. Don't try to spray it all at once in one coat. You spray it, let it dry, lacquer dries very quickly. Let it dry, apply another coat, let it dry, and you'll find that each time you apply the next coat you'll have to do less and less. She's beginning to take shape. That's after two coats, or two applications, I guess I should say, of the uh, dark oak toner. Not too bad. I think one more should just about do it. 
that's it I've got it all covered I took it out in the light looked it over every square inch front and back and we have a nice looking cabinet so far that dark toner on there now what I have to do is remove the paper and after a few hours I'm gonna go ahead and take some thousand grit sandpaper really 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 fine thousand grit I'm gonna go over the sides and I'm not gonna to do too much on the front here on these fluted columns I'm afraid I might sand through and we wind up with a ridge of uh, light brown or something just kinda of, just kinda of basically leave the this front edging alone but along the sides and the top I'll go ahead and smooth it up real good and the front I might hit the front a little bit with that thousand grit paper just lightly do it lightly lightly that's it so far uh, I'm getting ready to take the thousand grit sandpaper and uh, go over it and I'm debating whether or not to use it wet or dry probably wet would be the right way to go not really certain I'll think about that a few more seconds before I start sanding uh, I wanted to mention that the uh, speaker cloth support that piece of cardboard that goes in the back uh, was pretty torn up and I got rid of it so the question was you know what do I replace it with can I take a piece of cardboard and cut it out and try to make it fit and all this stuff and I decided that there might be a better way so I made a trip I measured what I needed to measure and I made a trip to Hobby Lobby to the picture framing department and I picked out a piece of matte material pretty strong really solid and I talked to the lady in there real nice and I told her what I needed you know a six and a half inch uh, hole cut in and uh, the diameter of the hole once it was in and I had the the left and right now look at that the only thing I have to do now is cut out this loop or this uh, half moon section okay it'll look like that once it's up in there and I'll just mark that with a pencil right there and cut that out myself and the rest will be covered with the cloth great speaker cloth backing Hobby Lobby they have the perfect tools for cutting those circles I decided to go with the wet sanding on this and instead of a thousand uh, grit paper I think I'll start out with uh, 800 just go with 800 just barely using the weight of my hand on the paper you don't want to sand through you just want to knock the bumps off and kind of smooth up the surface nice and smooth just barely using the weight of my hand you don't want to go crazy with this you kind of feel your way around already it's getting very smooth toward the rear here it needs a little bit more just keep in mind if you do sand through you can always take some of that darker toner and just retone on top of it it's not the end of the world everything's gonna work out fine let me work on this for a while to see what happens I'm also going to go ahead and very lightly sand the front of this thing uh, always try to stay away from your black lines you put on just kind of stay along the edge don't don't get close to it you don't need to be sanding that off at this stage of the game okay that works pretty good on that got it nice and smooth on the front the sides are nice and smooth and just in case a little bit of that water dripped down into some cracks and crevices where it's not wanted it might mess up any further lacquer finishing I think what I'm going to do is set this out in the sun for a while and just kind of let it dry out just a tad I'm getting ready to put the clear lacquer finish on the top of this thing but before I do I decided to go ahead and put in that speaker cloth backing and hold it in with a couple of clips and then go ahead and mark it like so by the way that that backing they made for me at Hobby Lobby they only charged me five dollars for that I thought that was a heck of a deal I had to go get one of those great big pieces that was like three feet by three feet it was a monstrous thing and I told them I said I don't need this much I just need you know a nine by nine and a half or whatever and they said oh don't worry about it you know we'll cut out what you need and, and 
cut the holes and do everything that needs to be done. Five, six bucks. Well, it turned out to be five bucks. Good deal. Now I'll take this little cutter I have right here from my little Harbor Freight X-Acto knife kit. And I will remove that backing and just trim it right on around there. And we will be in very good shape to get this thing back together. Well, that's it. I think I got her cut about right where she needs to be. It'll come down just a hair. And that's exactly what it'll look like on the rear of the front panel. It can't go all the way up to the top because there's some braces on the rear that keep it from going all the way up. But I think that's going to be fine. All I have to do now is mark the holes, punch the holes, and it'll be ready for the speaker mounting and the speaker cloth and all that stuff. As with all the radios, uh, I spray, whether it be gloss, semi-gloss, or in this case, satin, I use the Watco brand. I really like Watco. I can go to my local hardware store, and the fella just orders two, three cans at a time for me. Good place to order it, and easy to get, and it works fine. It's easy to work with this stuff. I, I can't recommend it enough. But, you know, like everything else, you just use the lacquer uh, that you, and the toner brand that you like best. I just happen to like Mohawk toners and Watco clear lacquer. We will be going over this entire radio and making it satin color. Uh, it does not, it should not, in my opinion, be glossy or semi-gloss. I've stated that before. It's just one of those designs that if it were real glossy, I've seen them that have been done in gloss. They look terrible. They look weird. Anyway, but before I do, again, the old tack cloth will be going over it one last time. Whenever you're spraying your lacquer or any other kind of paint or finish or stain or toner or whatever it is on your radio surfaces, always uh, I recommend you always try to lay it as flat as possible to avoid runs. And lay it on its side like this. Give it a nice coating. Take your time. No rush. No rush. One more thing about this no blush retarder. Uh, I've found that you don't have to have blush in order to use it. It will smooth out the surface very nice. So don't just think you have to use it only on, you know, very humid days where the moisture is trapped. Yes, you have to use it then. But, you know, it doesn't, you can use it anytime. You put on your, your uh, toner or you put on your clear lacquer and just give it a few shots with this. Uh, no blush retarder. It doesn't take a whole lot. It'll give you a nice smooth app, app applied uh, surface. All right, now we'll do the top. Wipe it down very lightly, very lightly with your tack cloth. And then we'll go ahead and I'll finish up this top here. And then, of course, when I'm done, I'll do the side, which you already saw me do this side already. And then I think we'll wrap up this video until next time. And hopefully, if all goes well, I'm waiting for a couple of parts to arrive from RenovatedRadios.com. RenovatedRadios.com. And once they get here, I think the next video might wrap everything up. So until then, this is John. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke.